Good day, class. Welcome to Module 2, The Firm and Its Environment. So, Module 2 consists of two lessons, which is Lesson 2 Point Man talks about environmental forces and environmental scanning. Um, lesson 2 talks about the forms of business organization. In Module 1, you've learned that an organization operates in an open system, as described by the system theory, meaning to say it interacts not only with its internal environment but also with its external environment. So as a manager in the future, understanding the environment in which a firm operates is essential so that you can make wise decisions in performing your managerial functions. So Module 2 will walk you through in understanding the environmental forces that surrounds the firm and how you're going to do an environmental scanning. Okay, so environmental forces and environmental scanning, lesson 2.1. So it is said that no business exists in a vacuum. So this basic principle simply means that a business is greatly influenced and affected by its internal and external environment so it is very important that since you are part of the firm you're going to identify and analyze these environmental factors through environmental scanning which is very important in a business so for today's lesson this would be our learning outcomes so at the end of this lesson students will be able to explain the environmental forces the internal and external factors of a firm Second, analyze the forces using environmental scanning techniques, which is the PEST and the SWOT analysis. So later on, you'll be able to understand what does PEST and SWOT analysis does mean. Okay, so to start with, um, I would like to request everyone to answer the self-test, okay? Um, this is not a recorded test. You just have to assess yourself if what type of managerial um skills do you have if if um ready baka in a unprepared environment or you you want a stable environment when you're going to have a manager or when you are going to be a manager okay so you just have put check on the in the in, in mostly true or mostly false for example Number one, enjoyed hearing about new ideas even when trying to meet a deadline. So, if that's true to yourself, then you just have to, to check on the mostly true part. Okay? So, and so on. And then, this is the scoring and interpretation of the self-test that you have conducted. So, give yourself one point for each item that you mark as mostly true. So, you just have to focus on the mostly true. So, it is regarding you to mostly false. Okay? So, if your score is less than 5, then you might want to start your career as a manager in a stable rather than unstable environment. Okay? So, if your score is above 5 or um, more than five, then a higher level of mindfulness and a better fit for a new manager in an organization with an uncertain environment. Okay, so you have to take note, class, that in an organization, um, in an organization, in a highly uncertain environment, um, everything seems to be changing. So in that case, uh, an important quality for a new manager is mindfulness, which includes the qualities of being open-minded and an independent thinker. So if you are in a stable in my environment, you are the type of manager that is closed-minded, okay? So, closed mind that may perform all right because much work can be done in the same old way. But, if you're, if you're the type of manager who really wants to start your career in an uncertain environment, then um, you're the type of manager that accepts... Um, new ideas, new ways of working, and facilitate new thinking. Okay, so mao na siya ang um, scoring and interpretation based on the self-test that you have conducted a while ago. Now, let's proceed to the dimension of the internal and external environment. So, as you have seen in the, in the figure, um, the internal environment 
is the employees, the cultures, and the management. So that means that internal environment, those are the people within your firm or business, okay? That includes employees, ang cultures sa inyong business, and then ang sa ang management style sa inyong a manager. Well, the external environment, um, this is the task environment that includes the customers, the competitors, the suppliers, the labor market. And along each side is the general environment that includes the technological, the natural, the social, the economic, the legal, and the international. So that means those are the um, organizations or people outside your business. Okay? So task environment of an organization is it is the environment which is directly affect the organization from attaining um, your business goal. Like for example, district uh, suppliers. Um, let's just say that in your business you have you, are, you have the target to have a 100 sales today, but your suppliers does it wala siya ni commit nga mamit niya na today ang kana nga number of items nga delivers in you ha. So it will greatly affect to your business. Another example in the general environment, let's just say in a um, environmental, okay, which is part of the natural. Let's just say um, there is a typhoon. So, it will greatly affect to your business since you cannot operate or you cannot open your business since there is a typhoon. Okay? So, let us first discuss um, the internal environment. So, internal environment, um, it's all about part of the internal environment is the owners and shareholders. Um, owners can be an individual or it can be a group of people who invested in the business and therefore have property rights and claims of the business. So, as owners, um, they have the right of changing the policy of the business and influence how it should operate. Basically, they are integral part of the firm and managers should take good care of them. Okay, since they are the owners, they are the shareholders. So basically, um, they provide the greatest um, revenue or I'm sorry, the greatest um, capital of the business. The second are the board of directors. So board of directors, um, they are the governing body of the firm. They are considered as the top manager, like the general manager. So the more the board members or the board of directors, um, they make decisions concerning the hiring and firing of personnel, the dividend of the policies, the payouts, and then the executive compensation. Okay, so. Uh, Board members, they are elected by the shareholders, okay? Mona sila. Um, basically, it is the shareholders who will choose who are those um, personnel that is part of the board of directors. So, another part of the internal environment is the employee. So, the firm can never perform its operation without the employees or workforce. So, they are considered as the most important component of the internal environment since basically, um, they are really the, um, they are the kind of hands-on personnel, okay? So, sila basically ang perform sa job face-to-face, -face, okay? So, when managed properly, um, these employees can change the firm's policy positively. However, if they are not contented on what the, the management has given to them, so basically they would transfer or they would look for another job. So it is very important to, um, to have a human resource um, department so that um, you can foresee kung sa to mga needs ang mga benefits nga gikinahangan for your employees so that they will remain in your in your company and you have and you will remain those um, loyal employees another part of internal organization oh i'm sorry internal environment is the organization's resources so the resources of the firm can be categorized into physical uh, human financial informational and technological resources 
So physical resources includes the land, the building, the machinery, and equipment, and all kind of materials of a firm. While the human resources of the firm pertains to the employees from top to bottom management, which is the general managers to the entry level employees. Okay? So, profits, investments, revenue, working, capital, and reserve funds are all part of the financial resources. So, for informational resources, these are the data and information needed by the firm to make informed decisions that belong to this type of resources. This includes the employee's profile, um, the competitor's profile, um, price list, um, the productions, the reports, okay, mga reports sa company or sa business, and mga data analysis, and then market information. Another part also of the internal environment or belong to internal environment is the organizational culture. So, organizational culture, this pertains to the collective behavior of the member of the firm. This includes their beliefs, their values, their missions, and habits attached to their actions. So a strong positive culture can help achieve the firm's goals as this influence and determines how employees behave. So most people don't think about culture. It's just how we do the things around here or the way things are here. However, managers have to think about Culture. Since culture, um, it would guide how people within the organization interact with one another and how the organization interact with the external environment, thus playing a significant role in the organization's success. Like for example, Starbucks. Anong Starbucks, anong mauman ang logo ang ilang gigamit? So basically, there's a reason behind it. Um, for example, the slogan. And the Disney. Okay, so there's a reason behind it why they come up that kind of logo. Okay, now let's proceed to the external environment. Since we begin more interconnected with each other, uh, managers need to understand the external environment in which it operates. Remember that the firms does not have control over this environment. Thus, it is essential to identify and analyze them to spot opportunities and threats and plans can be created to deal, to deal with them. So, kanisyang external environment um, of a firm, uh, it consists forces, um, it consists elements, um, events, situations, and institutions outside of the firm that affects its growth and survival. Okay? And this environment is subdivided into two layers. So, the task environment and then the general environment. So, let's discuss first the task environment. So, the task environment also termed as industry environment. So, this includes those forces in the industry which the firm operates. And one example or the part or one component of task environment is the customer. So, organization will compete for the customer as well as for the wholesalers or retailers and others. So, customer will decide the fate of the company and the companies will try their level best or will try their, their best to lure them. So, example, um, customer might start looking for some other alternative due to shift in consumer behavior. Like, for example, from conventional vehicles to electric, uh, electric vehicles. So, as part of the business, as a manager, you're going to think if what is the reason why most of our customers um, shift their consumer behavior. Ano ni shift man sila instead of availing the, the conventional vehicles that we offered, they opt to electric vehicles. So as a manager, you're going to think what could be the possible reason. And the possible reason is that they might have been caused by the competitors. So you really have to to focus on your customer. You really have to focus your target market because um, shifting of consumer behavior might danger your business. The second one is the competitor. So organization in the same industry or the type of business that provides goods or services to the same set of cost customers are referred to us, to us as the competitors. 
So competitors are constantly battling for loyalty from the same group of customers. Okay, so competitors like for example, um, the Adidas, Nike, Puma. So they are all shoe manufacturers. Okay, they all produce um, shoes. So basically, they are competitors. So if you're part of this kind of businesses, so you have to think, you have to think if on some edge sa inyo hang business so that you can lure your customers. Okay? So, mga na competitors. Next is suppliers. So, suppliers, um, they have the high bargaining power if the raw materials being supplied are rare or if there are less number of suppliers in the market. So, it is very important to hold on the suppliers and maintain good relationship with them. Since, um, your business relies on them. If they cannot provide you the raw materials that you need, then basically, um, it will stop, okay? Uh, your operation will stop, diba? Another part of the task environment is the labor management or labor market, I'm sorry. So, labor market uh, represents people in the environment who can be hired to work for the organization. So, every organization needs a supply of trained, qualified personnel okay so this labor market will affect organization right now uh, in that includes um since um labor market is increasing the business is increasing so basically um they really need those skilled and qualified employees and one of their um one of their factors is that it should be that one of their market is computer literate Okay, they are computer literate knowledge workers since um, we are now in a techie world, diba? So, usag sa factor ngigikin hanglan as a worker, okay? Um, another factor is that, uh, for example, is the um, unskilled, like in the hospitality industry. Um, it is very important that you have the skill, like for example, in bartending. So, it's very important that you really have the skill, really know how to perform, really know how to mix the um, wines. So, mo na important. Now, let us proceed to the general environment. Okay? So, general environment of a firm comprises the forces and factors that are generic or common to all businesses. So, unlike the forces in the task environment um, that are very specific and very easy to identify, the factors under the general environment are distant and difficult to specify. These are the technological, the natural, the social, cultural, the economic, the legal and political, and the international. So, let us discuss first the political or legal. So, political or or legal factors, um, example for this one are those changes in politics and regulations, okay? It will determine how freely a business can cooperate. Political factors include um, taxes, changes in tariffs, um, tax policies that would really have an impact on your business. For example, um, a nation with a stable government and consistent trade regulation often attracts more international businesses. As international companies know that this factor will ensure that the nation conducts business effectively. So, those same companies may be less likely to do business with nations that lack, lacks in infrastructure, okay? So, it will greatly affect to your business, okay? How the government will operate the nation or the country. So, it would really get greatly affect like mga DOT accreditation codes, like for example, if your company is already ISO certified, then basically, um, it would attract potential investor. Next one is economic. So economic, um, it can affect how well an organization performs in the marketplace. So these economic conditions and factors can include things such as unemployment rates, um, consumer disposable income, the interest rates, uh, the gross domestic product. An example for this factor is 
an action in an economic recession. So when the overall economy suffers, there tends to be a decrease in decretory income. So the amount of money individual has left over after paying for their necessity. Okay, so another example for this one is that Auto siya ito, example an employment rate since lesser na since daghan na ang unemployed na mga person then basically their buying power will um, become less also next is social cultural so this is another factor that would affect the organizations or the firm okay so social cultural is a combination of social and cultural contributors so some social cultural factors include population size um the cultural trend as well the demographics like age gender and race so when advertising to consumers a business keep their target demographics in mind to find ways to best reach their audience one example of a social cultural factor uh, that impacts businesses is the rise in the health consciousness in general population so if you're going if you're off offering burgers fries then basically um your sales will drop since health conscious naman ang mga tao so that's an example of social cultural next is technological so technological factors um this refers to the use of technology in business operations um this include the internet the information technology the global transfers and others so take note as a manager you need to very very selective in investing of what technology to use in your uh, business since it would really require a lot of money another one is the environmental okay so this is the physical condition in the environment environment which also have a great effect on your business so environmental factors like um natural disasters and pollution uh, global warming okay Manasha. and the next one is the general environment or which is part uh it's general environment which is also part of the external environment which is the demographic factors so demographic factors this refers to the um country's population such as the age the size the structure the income and other so just like in a social cultural factors understanding the demographic factors will help determine the products and services the population values and appreciates okay so actually um having a business is very challenging since you're going to look at the internal environment and also you're going to look at the external environment which is very wide and the changes is uncontrollable so business personnel or businesses the firms um really have really have really finding their ways on how to analyze those environment so there they can have conducted an environmental scanning so the environment of the business firm is constantly changing so in this dynamic world managers need to understand and keep a close look at their environment through environmental scanning so environmental scanning is defined as a systematic process of gathering and analyzing including monitoring of the factors in the internal and external environment of a firm so um, basically the purpose of environmental um scanning is you're going to create a roadmap okay roadmap that contains um information about the opportunities and threats existing and then those mga possible changes in the environment so as a manager through the environmental scanning you'll be able to know kung if that sudden change in the environment is an opportunity ba in your business or um threat ba na sa inyong business so these two common techniques in doing environmental scanning is being used in the business the pestle analysis and the SWOT analysis so SWOT analysis um this is performed to analyze the internal environment and okay, environment's strengths and weaknesses and the external environment um 
it is used to identify the opportunities and threats. So the strengths and weaknesses, um, it is the positive attributes to your business. Okay, so, so as you can see in the figure, um, in your firm, in the internal attributes of a firm, uh, you're going to identify what are the strengths in your business, what are the weaknesses of your business. And then in the external environment, you're going to identify if that sudden change in the technology is an opportunity for your for your firm or it could be a threat for your firm. Since, um, for example, there's a, a high technology um created or offered in the market so while well, you're going to avail that if you want to avail will increase your 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 production in your business or it will just add cost to your business so mona she kailang ni analyze if you're part of the firm if you're going to if you're if you are a manager okay so these are some questions that you need to consider um in conducting a SWOT analysis like for example um strength so what assets do you have in your team such as knowledge education so strengths um naaba mo yung mga highly skilled employees okay and then opportunities uh, weaknesses so what business process needs improvement so in what areas you need to improve so that you can compete with your competitors so mga ingana and then opportunities um, is your business is up and running? Do customers think highly of you? So, in this question, um, you'll be assessed if unsa ang assessment sa customers towards your business, towards your service. So, mga ingana. And then for threats, do you have potential competitors who may enter your market? So, threats, um, are you going to analyze if, for example, i offer din ako nga product, will it boom? Okay, mubum ba ni siya or basin na ano nag offer ani nga laing nga, nga company? So, mana siya yung yuhang kita on if you're going to conduct a SWOT analysis. Next is the PESEL analysis. So, PESEL analysis stands for political, economic, social, um, technological, legal, and environmental. So, it is very important that in doing this analysis, a manager gathers information about the issues arising from the factors, from the different factors, which is the politics, the economics, the social, the technological, the legal, and the environmental scanning. So these are the questions that you need to consider when you're going to conduct the PESOL analysis. So in terms of political and legal factors, um, how stable is the political environment? Okay, so mo na siya question. What is the government's policy on the economy? So mo na siya. In terms of social, cultural, how long are the population living? Like for example, if your target market is um, the old ones, so how long, for how many years those old ones will dominant in a certain place? Diba? And then another one is the economic factors, the interest rates the level of inflation, the employment level. So you're going to analyze that one. And then environmental factors. So for example, um, the location of your business near Banatia sa natural hazards or um, near Banatia sa um, natural disasters, mga ingana. And then technological factors. Um, unsa man nga technology, technology ang present at this time. If there is a sudden change of the technology, well, you're going to avail that one, okay? Um, nakaya ba sa budget, okay? So, muna siya inyo ang kailangan um, kita on. And remember, class, in doing the PISL analysis, you're, um, you're going to basically focus on where your business is located, diba? So, how are you going to determine um, the type of government if dili ni mo identify ang imuhang area of location, diba? So, like, for example, you're located in Bye Bye. So, you're going to analyze kung unsa ang political environment here in Bye Bye City. Okay? So, mga ingana. So, I am going to leave you this quote. So, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. So, it is the one that is the most adaptable to change. So, as no business exists in a cello, 
and that abyss is greatly influenced and affected by the ever-changing internal and external environment, um, identifying and analyzing these environmental factors through environmental studying is a must in order to adapt to the changing environment, okay? So, it is very important that you will not just have a business. Okay, mag-create lang ko a business just because I like it, just because I have the budget. You have to consider a lot of things, especially the internal and the external environment, since it will determine if you're going to, if your business will prosper, if your business will survive for how, for through the years, okay? So, maulang na siya, class. So, if you have any questions regarding the discussion, do, don't hesitate to uh, message me. Okay? So, thank you, everyone.